I'm Ariana with Fresh Pair of Eyes. How are you guys? Great. Good. How are you doing? So in the article, it's focused on a girl named Sedona. And Sedona and Caitlin are really nothing alike, at least from what I read in the article. Why did you decide to make Caitlin so different? Uh, well, I think that, um, you know, I got the article from Steven Spielberg, who had optioned it right from The New Yorker. So... I met with him and then I reached out to Susan and I got to hear her story of how she met this girl. And then I went and met the girl in Boston and her mom. And as I started to try to put a story together, I love teenage characters in movies. I think they're always fascinating, they're unpredictable. Teenagers have been sneaking out their windows since the dawn of time, so I always like those kind of opportunities to let teenagers make bad decisions and try to recover from them. So I knew that those elements were gonna find their way into the movie. So the the young girl that it was based on has gone on to have an incredible life she's an unbelievably accomplished person and so it's just kind of interesting that like the origin story that it kind of was inspired by kind of took me to a different place where a girl goes through a really difficult time in her life post divorce and some money trouble and some social problems and some thinking that really gets kind of dangerous, and I really wanted that to be an element in the movie. So I kind of took it in a little bit of a darker turn. Yes. Susan, when you were writing that the article, did you ever have the idea that, oh, this would be, um, has enough layers to become a movie? You know, in, it, this is one of the few pieces I've ever written where while I was writing it, I had this inkling that at least the setting, the environment, the world that I was visiting would be amazing in the film. I mean, there, there was something really magnificent about these birds and seeing them flying. And, and in particular, and we get this in the film, that nervousness as the owners wait for the birds to come home and the sort of exhilaration of the bird arriving, even though it's come from 200 miles away, you know? And so seeing that as I did, I did feel like this would really be incredible in a movie. But I also always write for the page, you know, that that's what I do and I'm very comfortable with that and I feel like if you want to be a good writer for books and magazines, you really need to be writing for that medium. And whatever happens after that, that's great. But it, I don't think it's good to be writing with that in mind. Um, I think it really can affect your, your power as a storyteller on the page. Yes, that's so true. Um, Pigeon racing is obviously a very unique hobby. Do you guys have um, <laughs> interesting hobbies when you were that age or even present day that could be odd to others who aren't into it? <laughs> well, I was just confessing to John that when I was about that age, I had a pet mouse and I loved her very much and I thought she was unusually beautiful. And so I kind of prepped her for what I thought was the mouse show circuit um, and sadly <laughs> discovered that there is not a show circuit for mice. So I made little ribbons for her myself because I knew that if we had been able to compete, she would have won. She was and, a star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was very special. She was a star. Uh, would I recommend people getting into the show mouse business? <laughs> no, I would say probably not a good idea. <laughs> I collected baseball cards. There's no movie in that. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. I see it coming. I, I, I can see that script together. I trust you. Or can you. <laughs> we see these together in some way? Yeah, little a mouse. A mouse eats someone's priceless base, baseball card collection. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Writes itself. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. I can't wait to talk about future projects and congrats on this movie. Thank, thank you. you.